Today, we're making a clock on the CNC router. I'm starting with a block of salvaged local walnut that's getting planed down flat. And while that happened, off camera, I did up the design. I'm finding the center of the slab and homing my CNC router to that point, so I can run the carve. The first carve is with a 30 degree V-bit to get the details. And then the outer shape can be cut out with a quarter inch end mill. Brooke is going to handle the resin fill on this. So we want a crisp edge on this resin pour, which requires a bit of a process, but it's well worth it. I'm cleaning up the carve with an awl. And next, I'm sealing the grain with clear epoxy. I'm using Total Boat High Performance Epoxy with a fast hardener here, just because it speeds things up a bit, and I'm letting that harden completely. Before moving on to the next step, which is a black resin pour over all of the carbs in this. To color the resin, I used activated charcoal powder. And you'll notice that before going in for the pour, I did a little test patch on the side of the walnut to make sure that I had added enough powder to where I had an opaque resin. This is my favorite way to get a crisp, even jet black color because the result is really good, but it's also really affordable for a huge container of the powder. And then Michael went in with a lighter to pop any surface bubbles in the black resin pour before this sits out until it completely hardens. And I can sand it. I'm sanding up to a 220 grit and off camera, I popped the grain before the final sand so it would be ultra smooth. The sanding process revealed a few holes in the wood. I filled these with UV resin and then rested a UV light over them. I 3D printed this little stand for the UV light. It's super simple, but makes it really easy to wait a minute or two for the UV resin to solidify and then be sanded down. All done and ready to sand already. See, it's great. With the face of the clock flat, I could flip it on the CNC bed and add a pocket to the back to seat the electronics so the clock will lay closer to the wall. And then I got finish on there. I went with Osmo because it's my favorite. Unfortunately, I didn't get fantastic finish shots of this, but here's what we've got. This resin inlay technique gives a nice, crisp black edge, and I want to take a moment to say that a clock has a hole in the middle to fit hands, but basically the same process can be used in a range of finished things. Here's an example of me using the same inlay process 
to make a sign. This is salvaged sugar maple, and we carved a logo into it, sealed the grain, filled it with black resin, sanded it all down, popped the grain, and then sanded it again so it's nice and buttery smooth and ready to take finish. And then there it is. And as always, if you wanna give the clock design a try on your CNC router, the files are available on makersworkshop.com.